You know, I've been grinding through the same industry for about 15 years. I love it. I'm passionate about it. <clears throat> it is not a sexy profession at all, but it is something that brings home the bacon, man. It, it feeds my family. It feeds me and other passions that I have. But it's, uh, it's not a nine to five. It's a sales job. I'm in it all the time. So I'm pursuing other passions, other wants, other ideas that I have. But again, I've listened to you talk about, hey, you need six hours of sleep and you need to grind on your second job, your extra job. But man alive, there's only so much I can do within a I short it. period of time. I get it. So and you, I've got to provide. I've got uh, to provide for my family. You're not wrong. So now let's get to the most interesting part. And? And I'll continue to grind. I'll, I'll continue to do what I can, when I can, as often as I can. And, and I think that's the punchline, you know, brother, right? Like, like, like life's about alternatives. Like, I think that's awesome that you're dealing with the practicality. And look, by the way, when I talk about six hours of sleep, you know, some people need seven, some people need eight. And that's fine to me, as long as you feel good about what you're doing when you're on the field, right? As long as you feel good about your 14, 16, 17 hours, and don't forget, you gotta fix the plane while you're flying it. Like if you wanna get out of the situation you're in, your only option, you only have one option. It is to grind in those four, five, six hours that you have, and it will take longer because you don't have 18 hours to just put it into this thing. The problem is you have no alternative. It sounds like you have, responsibilities that you've made in your own head, financial responsibilities, emotional responsibilities, and you have to deliver on that, right? Not every day. So I think, I think what people have to understand is, so does everybody in some shape or form have a version of that, and you just gotta navigate it the best you can and not be crippled by it, and try to be as successful as you can on those off hours, to hopefully create that world where it switches over where you can do that full time. Brandon? I also think you just gotta give yourself at least 30 minutes a day just to think about the possibilities and what if. And a little daydreaming. Usually I do it while I'm exercising, but it's really important to give yourself time to just think about what if and daydream. I'm a master daydreamer. Um, I, I like daydreaming when I'm walking and I'm just thinking about what if because if you don't give yourself that time, it's, it's difficult. You gotta picture it. For me, I like to picture like, Wow, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go and see. Like I have this whole thing. And I'm gonna do this whole thing with Obama. I want to do his first autograph signing. It's like my dream. I, I, I already. I pictured it. What I'm gonna to say to him? And I'm just working backwards. So sometimes you picture something, and just work backwards. But give yourself the 30 minutes a few times a week at least to do that. I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, and I'm giving myself that that time. I mean, I I learned from you, Gary. Is give myself that time between. You know, I've, I've got three little kids, you know, ranging from eight to two years old. And they're, you know, them and my wife are my number one clients. They, they come hundred percent of everything else. But it's, I'm passionate about the, the job that I have. I love helping other people achieve their goals. That's always been my number one goal. And it's trying to, at, you know, your age, Gary, I mean, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I, I got you by a couple of months. It's, I'm trying to take that time to briefly become introverted enough to follow my dream, my passion, when I have time on my man. somebody else who may consider it like off time, man, but I, I, I just keep grinding, um, but I can't give up, and I, I don't want to give up. You the, shouldn't. The passion and, I have for the business and, that I'm in right now. And listen, my man, if you're good, then you're good. The reason I try to get everybody to be selfish is the best way to be selfless is you're happy. And everybody's trying to like, if you're making everybody else happy and you're miserable, you're gonna crack and you're gonna regret and then you're not doing anybody any favors if you crack at 49 and blame everybody for your shit. Everybody makes their bed, sleep in it. You will never hear me complain about not having enough time with my kids or family because I'm making choices. I have friends who all they do is complain about not being with their family that have $100 million in the bank. I'm like, if, you, com if you complain about that, then spend more time with the family. Then in reverse, all you have is people that complain about not having more and they want it, but it's because they go to every single softball game and recital, you make your bed. And if you're happy, man, then you're good. Yeah, no question. And also, you're in a great town, by the way, Austin. What's that, my friend? I'm 
sorry, Brandy, go ahead. I was just going to say, Austin's got so many opportunities, so much growth. It's so vibrant. You're in a really special town. I mean, you know, Austin's just off the hook as far as its energy, the vibrance, the youth. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity. You may need to kind of reset a little bit and rethink about some of the opportunities that may have passed you, said no to you, go back and ask again. Things have changed a lot in Austin. You may want to go back to some of those things. I want to go back to that. Were you saying that you're content but hungry? Is that where you were going? I'm, I'm content with what I have. I've, I've been in the mortgage industry for 15 years. Again, it's not sexy. And I love the company I work with, Axia Home Loans, but it's not its not everything that I know that I have a passion for. It's not every last thing that I know I've got rattling and around in my head. It's hard for me to narrow the field of saying, okay, I've got so many thoughts, so many ideas of what I can do, not necessarily just in this industry, but in, in other things as well. I, I love what I'm doing, but I know that I have more potential. Matthew? I know that there's something Matthew? else that I'm... Matthew? Matthew? Yes, sir. You're not fully content. And nor should you be. And and, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. And and or and or I'm gonna throw you a completely different curveball. I would argue that I'm content, which would throw everybody for a curveball. But I am. Like in a lot of ways I feel like I'm super content. Like I'm content because I get to play my game. Right? Like like, it's not that I need more, it's not that I need to buy the Jets tomorrow or have, be on more covers or have another great investment or 400 million for Vayner. My content part, I actually think I'm content. I actually would argue, Brandon, you're content because you're playing your game, right? And so Matthew, the thing that I want people to understand is content versus I'm okay and, or I'm solid but, you know, I feel like I'm content yet hungry because I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. If you listen carefully to the way you described it, I wouldn't call that being content. And it's okay to, go ahead. Let me throw this out. You were or were not content with just Vayner Media before you went on to Vayner Sports and getting into music. There was something else that drove you that direction, some other want. It wasn't that you didn't love Vayner Media, it was, is that it or do you see other opportunities in doing something else? Yeah, I, I think the key ahead. is don't be satisfied. Yeah, that's a different thing. You know, thing, be right? content, but don't yeah. be satisfied. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I love Steiner Sports. Yeah. I mean, my company, I've got it's like my it's like my child, but I'm not satisfied. Yeah, I think, listen, and you can get into semantics you know? with these words. Here's what I would say for everybody who's watching. I'm just desperate for everybody to get in that zone. Like, look, anybody who watches my show or calls me is already different than me because I'm not doing that with anybody ever, ever. And so for me, I'm always trying to think about that insight. What yeah. is it, wh- why have I gone to a place where I don't even talk to Steve Ross or anybody who's done it? I'm just so in my own insular place. What is it that I have there? What is it, is it the, by the way, it might not even be a strength. Is it a weakness? Is it that I'm, uh, is it do we all learn differently? I don't think it's some superpower. I'm always just trying to say what is it and, and it's what makes me know that I'm in a different place than a lot of people that consume my content. It doesn't make me better, it makes me different, and I'm trying to find angles to throw at you guys to bring you value. Make sense? Love it. Cool, Love my it. man. Love All right. We, you know, one, we're gonna sneak one more in. I know Tyler, you're gonna freak out, but I can't leave yet because I'm having too much with Rick.